This is KGW News at Sunrise. We now know the names of the two people who tragically lost their lives in the apartment fire in Northeast Portland. I would love to have some answers. I know our community, the folks who live there would love to have answers. Next on Sunrise, as neighbors and families mourn, investigators get to finally take their first look at the scene. Minority restaurants trying to rebound from the pandemic say they were blindsided after their relief money was pulled. A judge ruled the federal program discriminated against white owned businesses. Coming up this morning, we'll take a closer look at the case. This is one of the places where they used to make the actual loom machine. From that point forward, their goal was how can we start an automotive company? Yeah, from making those loom fabric machines to becoming one of the biggest car brands in the world. Our journey to Tokyo continues at the Toyota History Museum. Very cool. Good morning to you on this Thursday. Rod is feeling better today. Yes, You're I am. back with us. That head cold for a couple days. Oh, no good. You know, I'd say, please, anybody give me something. <laughs> that part of it was actually quite wonderful. All right, let's get you to the <laughs> to the weather map. And uh, boy, what a great, comfortable morning. Look at all the 50s, including 51 in Happy Valley, 53 degrees out in Beaverton. We're just now starting to get some low marine clouds coming in. 60 in Salem. It does not look like today's marine push will be anything close to yesterday, meaning if you are waking up to some cloud cover, I think you'll have the sunshine before noon today. So 59 out at the airport right now where it has just recently clouded over 68 degrees at noon and high temps day could hit 80 yesterday. 76 was the high. Not bad. All right, Rod, thank you. We'll check in with you soon. Topping your news at five this morning. What sparked the deadly fire in Northeast Portland on the 4th of July? We may soon know as investigators are starting to get their first up close look inside that scene. We also learned the names of the two men killed in the fire. Mike Benner has an update from the apartment complex. I I'm such a feeler. I just want to contribute in any way that I can. Directly across the street from the scene of a deadly apartment fire, Becca Olson Kling begins to build a memorial in honor of the two men who died. It's been very overwhelming. I just live across the street, and so I was here. I witnessed a lot of things. The fire Becca witnessed killed 31-year-old Seth Thompson and 31-year-old Richard Gramillion, identified by authorities Wednesday. Becca did not know Seth personally but she certainly knew of him. There was like a little clearing through the trees. I could see that he would sit up there. And so, yeah, I never officially met him, but just knowing that he was there, um, yeah, it's it's been really heartbreaking to, to know that he went through this. They were sweet people, good people. Talisha Brown lived at the Heidi Manor Apartments and lost everything in the July 4th fire. She's beyond grateful to have escaped with her life. But she grieves for the men who passed and the 25-year-old woman critically injured. I had love for everyone here. So I'm very sad that Seth lost his life and for the uh, other gal that severely burned and for the other guy, my neighbor downstairs, who lost his life. They were so innocent. They did not deserve that. So that's who my heart goes out to. I have been doing this a long time. Unfortunately, I have seen large fires like this. Anytime there's a loss of life, it's tragic. Fire investigator Rob Garrison says Wednesday morning was the first time investigators were able to get beyond the tape and into the scene. He says the scene is so large and the collection of evidence so tedious, the ATF is assisting. They're looking for clues, anything that's out of the ordinary, any um, ignition source. If they find an ignition source, they have to rule that out or they have to determine whether or not this is a possible cause. Garrison says fireworks could be to blame as there were were plenty of reports of them in the hours leading up to the blaze. He says smoking or shoddy electrical work could be factors as well. Regardless, I would love to have some answers. I know our community, the folks who live there would love to have answers. In the meantime, neighbors are thinking about the men who died, the woman injured, and the others left without a home. My heart is with them. I know this community is so amazing and will help them recover. Detectives are confident there are people out there who have critical information about what happened here on the morning of July 4th. If that is you, you are urged to contact the Portland Police Bureau. There may even be some reward money available through Crime Stoppers. Reporting in Northeast Portland, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. There are several fundraising efforts to help the tenants affected by this fire. 
Check out our story on KGW.com to find out more. All right, let's get to three things to know about coronavirus this morning. Number one, data from Johns Hopkins University shows that COVID has now killed more than 4 million people worldwide. It's about the population size of Los Angeles. Even with the massive number, it's widely believed to be an undercount because of overlooked cases or deliberate concealment. Number two, the CDC reports the Delta variant, now the dominant strain in the U.S. That variant makes up 51% of new COVID infections in the most recent two-week period. Data shows the number of cases spiked 30% since the latest numbers. The Delta strain has been found in every state and remains a serious risk for people who are unvaccinated. And number three, Japan has put Tokyo under a state of emergency as another wave of COVID there is spreading. It goes until August 22nd, well past the Olympics. Workers will be asked to stay home. Bars and restaurants have to suspend alcohol sales so people don't gather and forget to distance. Organizers today will also decide whether or not to have any Japanese fans at the Olympic events. Venues were set to host up to 10,000 fans, or 50%. The Olympics start July 23rd and close August 8th. And those are your three things to know about COVID. Businesses in Oregon are continuing to recover from the huge financial hit they took during the pandemic. Now promised government support is gone. There wasn't enough money to cover everyone who applied for the federal restaurant relief fund. So the Small Business Administration prioritized businesses run by women, minorities, and veterans. Dan Yates is the president of the Portland Spirit. The sightseeing and dinner cruise was set to get $4 million from the grant. We're a veteran-owned company, so we were pretty comfortable knowing that we were in the first group to get funded. Uh, but I was very concerned that the entire program would be in jeopardy because uh, we've never done federal funding based upon uh, a race. Turns out the program was in jeopardy. Some white business owners sued, saying the fund was discriminatory and the court ruled in their favor. The minority businesses had funding pulled and the fund overall ran out of money. Now restaurant owners have to hope that Congress will go back and vote on a new funding source to cover everybody who applied for help. Well, for the first time in more than a year, a cruise ship left Seattle last night headed for Alaska. There's no paying customers on board. Instead, Royal Caribbean employees are posing as guests. There are also members of the CDC on board. This is the second test after the first one out of Miami. While on board, the cruise will simulate having a sick guest on the ship. The most important thing is making sure our guests feel safe because that really is going to give them this comfort level to relax and have a great vacation like they really want to do. The first real cruise leaves Seattle July 19th. Passengers may not notice most of the changes like expanded medical facilities, onboard COVID testing and better ventilation. But the cruise ship tests are a sign that life is starting to move around mm. a lot more and that includes cars and wildlife. Yeah, people are traveling again as COVID restrictions ease. At the same time, wildlife is on the move, pushed out of their habitat by wildfires. The Oregon Wildlife Foundation has started a Watch for Wildlife campaign to raise money to create more wildlife passages. They're tunnels built underneath highways that funnel animals through safely versus running across the road. There's a notable one south of Bend in central Oregon that's reduced car crashes with wildlife by 85% since it was built in 2012. There's another one under construction farther south on Highway 97 as well. The foundation is selling new Oregon license plates to pay for more of them. We install an underpass that provides, and literally the statistics show us that we're um, we're reducing wildlife vehicle collisions by over 80%, well over 80%, approaching 9%. Right now, you can buy a voucher for the license plate, but once the Federation gets a couple hundred more people to buy into this, the plates will go into production.
All right, not too long ago, Rod, our heat wave was making national yes. news, but this morning Elsa is taking the headlines. Uh, yeah, uh, and the news isn't horrible with this uh, tropical storm. It's still producing sustained winds in the 40 plus mile per hour uh, zone, which means there could be some 50 mile per hour gusts. But basically, it's just moving toward Raleigh, North Carolina. It's, it's almost just become a cluster of strong thunderstorms. One to three inches rain in the forecast for them. And if you do jump on your weather app and you want to look at the imagery of Elsa, you'll probably notice what's going on down in Texas. It's not a tropical system. It's just a low pressure center, but it's producing some pretty hefty rains along the uh, Texas Gulf Coast. And then we'll move you to our area where absolutely nothing is going on. We do have a weak marine push starting to take hold this morning. I don't think the marine clouds will be solid all areas. And if you are waking up to cloud cover, I think you'll have sunshine before noon today. So not like yesterday when we had all that drizzle in many locations as well. I want to point out on the watch warning map, no fire uh, weather watches or warnings. So that's great news today. This deep red in Baker City and Burns, that's an excessive heat watch that's been issued for this weekend, Saturday, Sunday into Monday. So in this area, mainly southeastern into far eastern Oregon, the high temps could get back up to about 104 degrees, the National Weather Service believes. Uh, all right, we see increasing clouds over downtown Portland. We're at 59 degrees right now. It's a nice start to your day. I think we'll get the sun developing this morning, 80, and then we're back up to about 90 tomorrow on Saturday, and then still warm Sunday and Monday at 87 degrees. By the way, if you're wondering, forecast models almost go through the end of July and they don't show any rainfall. Back to you. Oh boy, we could use some. Rod, thanks. Coming up this morning, no instructions, no replacement parts, but plenty of know-how and a dream. A telescope more than a century old gets new life at a local university. And our Verify team is looking into the troubled 2020 census. Was it ever finished? We have the answers after the break. And it is summer, but it's not too early to start our work on the KGW School Supply Drive. We want to help kids go back to the classroom with everything they need, and you can help. Go to kgw.com school to sign up your business, and we'll send you an official kit to help us collect supplies. Join us and make sure thousands of families, kids, and teachers have a strong start to this next school year.